Welcome to part two of our introduction to basic HPC. We've already covered logging in, basic Linux, and the acceptable use policy. Let's move on to storage and file transfer. For basic use of the HPC cluster, you only need to worry about your home directory and the scratch directory. The home directory is intended for scripts, small application source code, and executables. There is not enough space in the home directory for large data files. Each account has one gigabyte of quota in slash home slash username. This space is backed up daily. One copy of each file is retained in the backup. Deleted files are retained for about seven days. One gigabyte is not much space, but you shouldn't be using the home directory very much. Most of the work you will be doing will be done in the Scratch directory. Scratch Base is intended for the storage requirements for running jobs. Applications should use Scratch Base during job execution. In other words, jobs should be submitted from slash share. Each project has 10 terabytes of quota in slash share slash group name. This space is not backed up. Files that have not been accessed in 30 days are automatically deleted. Let's go back to our session on Henry 2 for a closer look at these directories. Here I am back on Henry 2. If I echo home, it tells me where my home directory is. And I'm actually in the home directory. LS shows what is in my home directory, and LS minus L is the long form, shows the sizes. So let's say I was on Henry 2 and I got an error saying disk quota exceeded. That means I filled up my home directory. So let's look at my quota. Quota minus S, S makes it human readable. So right now, this is how much space I'm using 1423 megabytes. So that's more than one gigabyte. I actually have two gigabytes of quota. If I was to hit my quota, this number would be the same as this one, and I'd have to clean up my files. How do I look at what files to clean up? So I already did ls minus l, but that's hard to read. So we'll do ls minus l and make it human readable. That puts it in kilobytes. That's a little easier to read. Let me clear the screen. So if you want, you can actually put it in reverse size order. That puts the biggest one down here. So that's how you can help clean up your files. Sometimes you'll have big dot files. So that, what do you do if you had a hidden file? You just put an A and there you go. It gives all the dot files. So you could look around and see what files are big and maybe you need to clean up your files a little bit. So let's do clear. One other thing you can do is disk usage. So if I wanted to find which one of these files, if I think the LSF workshop was taking a lot of space, then I could do disk usage on that. DU is disk usage. And this, let's do minus H for human readable. Okay, and these are all tiny files. These are all example files. Let me hit clear. So let's do that again. This is the disk usage and it shows all of the directories and the contents. And if you have a lot of stuff that can really take a long time and make a lot of output to the screen. So let's do du minus h for human readable and one, don't go in any directories, just show what is in the current directory. That's dash d zero. And that just shows how much space is taking up by the current directory. Remember dot is the directory you are in. So let's clear the screen. Echo user, that should be your Unity ID. Echo group, that should be your default group. Remember group shows all the groups. Group is your default group. So where is the scratch directory? It should be slash share slash group slash user pwd. There it is. This is an alias, this part, so you only have to type the share. 
But when you type PWD, don't be surprised that it looks different. It's just an alias. So now let's do quota. Quota minus S. See, this is the same. Whenever you type quota, it doesn't matter where you type it from. That's for your home directory. Now we can look at how much stuff I have in my scratch directory. Okay. And I'm actually not going to do that. It'll take about five minutes. But that is how you would look at how much space is being used in your scratch directory. So go ahead and give that a try. We said that for basic use of the HPC, we only need to worry about the home directory and the scratch directory. Let's look at other storage resources. Go to the HPC website, scroll down to get started, and click Storage, Directory Locations, and Size Limits. We've already covered basic user storage, which includes the home and the scratch directories. In addition to that, supplemental group storage includes mass storage and a space for user-maintained software. Additional resources include HPC partner storage, research storage, and storage from the NC State University libraries. You need to understand a bit more about the HPC storage before using all of this information efficiently. So let's scroll back up and go to the video, Henry 2 navigating the different types of storage. We need to watch that now. So go ahead and watch this video. Now that we know about storage, we have to learn how to transfer files back and forth between Henry 2 and our local machine. There's a sample file that we're going to use during this tutorial. The first thing you will do is copy that example to your home directory. After making some modifications on that file, we'll transfer it back to our local machine. We have provided a sample exercise file. The sample R script is located here. To do the following exercise, here are the steps. In your home directory, make a directory called guide. Change directory to the guide folder that you just created. Copy the R script to the guide directory. Show the contents of the guide directory and look at the file weather.r. Before modifying weather.r, Save a copy of the file as weather.r.save. Confirm the new file exists and check the contents. Use nano to modify the original script by adding a comment line, pound hello. Display the contents of the script again. Delete the backup copy. Please pause the video now and see if you can complete this exercise. Here are the steps to get the sample exercise file. In your home directory, make a directory called guide. CD into guide. Copy the sample R script. User local apps samples guide weather.r. Copy it here. That's the contents of my guide directory. And let's look at the file, weather.r. I'm gonna use cat because I think it's a small file. And there we go. I'm gonna clear the screen. Before modifying a file, it's a good idea to make a copy. So let's copy weather.r and call it weather.r.save. LS confirms that the new file does exist. Let's look at the contents using cat. Weather.r.save. And there it is. Let's use less just so we can remember it. Less weather.r.save. Okay, and it's not big enough to fill the screen, but we still have to remember Q to quit. Now let's use nano to modify the file. Nano weather.r. 
a comment line in R, and you don't need to know this, but it's just a pound sign. And so we're just going to write hello. And remember, nano, you type stuff, and then it's control X, Y, and enter to save. Let's make sure it did what we thought. Cat weather dot R. And let's see, here we go. This is what I put in. So now we can delete the backup copy. Remove weather.r.save. And it's deleted. In this next exercise, you will copy weather.r to your local computer. Try to transfer the file either with SCP using these instructions or try SFTP using these instructions. I recommend you try both. Pause the video now to transfer the file. I need to copy the file weather.r to my local computer. And right now this terminal is on Henry 2. It's not on my local computer. So first of all, let me clear the screen. Weather.r is the file that I want to transfer, and it is located here. This is the path to weather.r, so I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Copy. Now, I need to start on my local terminal when I'm transferring files, so I'm going to open a tab. I do that by shell, new tab. And that's for a Mac. If you are on MOBA Xterm, there's a plus sign at the top right and you can click it to open a new tab. So on my Mac, first of all, you can do this if you want. I'm going to make a directory HPC demo so I could put my file there so I don't want it with my other files. So I'm going to CD into the HPC demo and there's nothing there. SCP, secure copy. And then what I want to do is I am copying from Henry 2 to my local machine. So LLLOWE is my Unity ID at login.hpc.ncsu.edu colon and then path to stuff. Here's the path to the stuff. Home low guide is where my stuff is slash and the file is weather.r. And if I hit enter, I am going to get an error. What did I forget? I said secure copy stuff, but it doesn't know where to put that. So here, let me do the up arrow. Secure copy weather.r to here. That is the directory that I'm in right now, the dot. So now I hit enter, enter my password. Did it work? Let's type ls, and there it is. Let's make sure it actually contains what we think. So let's do cat weather.r, and there it is. And there's where we said hello at the top. Now I'm going to show you how to do this using SFTP, and that's secure FTP. First of all, let me get rid of weather.r because I'm gonna get it again. I'm just gonna use SFTP. So to do that, I do SFTP, my Unity ID again, at login.hpc.ncsu.edu, and I have to log in again. Okay, this time it takes me to a prompt, and if I do LS, that is what is on Henry 2. SFTP has local, so that's what's on Henry 2. If I want to see what's in the current directory, local ls. And there's nothing there. Remember, I deleted it. So now we can use cd just as if we were on Henry 2. cd guide ls weather.r. That's what I want. So when you're in SFTP, you use get. Get weather.r and you don't have to put a dot you're just getting you're getting that file and it's enter okay and ls is what's on henry 2 local ls now you see that it has something so you can cd around 
and you can do a local CD. So if I do LCD, LLS, that is on my local machine. Let's go ahead and put one of these files on Henry 2. Put, and let's try the science.txt.1 and ls. And there we go, science.txt.1. It's in my home directory. To get out of the SFTP session, just type exit. And there we go. Let's summarize our options for transferring files to and from the cluster. Use SCP when transferring a single file. Use SFTP to transfer multiple files without needing to re-authenticate or to be able to navigate through the remote file system. In other words, you can use LS, CD, etc. Use Globus to transfer files unattended in the background with status checking and fault tolerance. This is the preferred method for transferring very large files. See the HPC video tutorial for instructions on using Globus. To find the instructions for transferring files, start from the HPC website, click Documentation, and Transfer Files. This page has the instructions for SCP, SFTP. It has information about Globus, including a link to the video tutorial, and it explains how to synchronize local and remote files with rsync. Thank you for completing part two of the introduction to HPC. See you in the next section.